I feel like I've had the wind knocked out of me. We've been together just over three years. Things were great for the first two years, despite some health issues for me and surgeries that no doubt caused a strain on our relationship at times. I'm still not 100% and I'm still working on myself, but I'm in a better place now. After about six months into our relationship, we got a dog together which we both love, and she moved into my apartment. She still had hers leased at the time though. We were in love, I thought, and were talking about our future together. We constantly told each other that we loved each other. The health problems never seemed an issue for her, and she said she enjoyed looking after me when I needed her to. However, I think this has always weighed heavily on her. It definitely restricted how much we did and how much we were out and about. Her new job, one year now, has her socializing and networking with a lot more people than her previous job, and I didn't realize until recently how much she enjoyed going out. She always said that she loved staying in with me and occasionally going out, but I guess things changed lately. We've been talking about buying a house for a long time. We were both happy to do this before marriage for financial reasons. Four months ago, I sold my apartment and we moved in with my family and have been house hunting since. Her family all live abroad. It's been really difficult living with my family and it's caused a strain on our relationship. I didn't think it was so bad though. I thought it was just a blip and everything would be fine after we moved out. But she's become more stressed and distant over the past two months and has been going out more and more in the evenings after work. Our jobs have always been very different and in different sectors. She's office based and I'm mostly working from home. Over the last few months, she's been going to more work events, networking, drinks with colleagues, etc maybe two to three times a week for a few weeks in November, December. I never thought anything of it because I trusted her completely. We're abroad now staying with her family for another few days. We've seen parents, grandparents, aunties, and cousins. We're staying with her parents. Last night she told me that she's been messaging with a guy, kinda from work since October, and about two to three weeks ago, she slept with him twice. She said that he showed her affection that I haven't showed her in a long time, which I think is really unfair to say, although perhaps there's some truth to it. Apparently, he didn't know she was in a relationship. When he found out, he asked her to break up with me. She refused and ended it with him and blocked him. I'm freaking floored. I can't believe it. We're spending the holidays together, seeing her family, and now this. We have another five days here seeing more of her family friends, family. As I type this, she's asleep next to me. I can't sleep. I loved this girl and thought she was the one. We've been through really tough times together and I can't even imagine the idea of dating and doing it all again. I'm 35 now, not 100% healthy and a bit of an introvert, socially awkward at times. Am I crazy for considering forgiving her and trying to work through this? Once or twice, a cheater, always a cheater? What the frick do I do here for the next five days? Keep up appearances with her family, friends? We both love our dog, which also adds to the pain. I know it's not the same as a kid, but neither of us has ever been dead set on having kids, and we both love dogs, which is why we got her together early on. I told her I'm keeping the dog, and she just nodded. My life feels like a mess now. Making decent money, but no proper career, which also weighs on both of us. Still working through some health issues. Just sold my apartment and was ready to buy a house with her. 35 years old, I feel old, and now I have to start all over again? Just me and the dog? For frick's sake. Hi again, Reddit. It's the idiot here who's questioning everything in his life now. Thanks for all the replies. That post was mostly a vent. I know what needs to happen next. The immediate problem is that we don't fly back for five days and buying another plane ticket is freaking expensive. I don't think I can justify shelling out a ton of money to go home by myself a few days earlier. Someone mentioned about moving in with each other too fast. That detail was a mistake. I wrote that post half asleep this morning and got the timeline slightly wrong. She actually moved into her own new place about six months into our relationship with a new lease, but then we just didn't spend much time there mostly because we both preferred spending time in my area slash apartment. 
and then she fully moved into mine after maybe 14 months. Not that it makes much difference to any of this. In terms of selling my apartment, I'm still very glad I sold it. I had been there for years and it was the right time to move on. So fortunately, there are no regrets there. I suppose I know 35 isn't old. Dating just freaking sucks and I'm really not looking forward to it. And as you all know, it's not just that. I now need to, one, move by myself, two, keep working on my health, three, try and move my career forward. I work for myself, which has stagnated due to health issues. Four, fully take care of myself again. Fortunately, I'm in good shape and a good cook. Five, look after the dog all by myself and six, start dating again. Obviously, the alternative to all the above is to work on our relationship, but mostly forgive a freaking cheater, which I can't do. I know it's over, but the next steps are daunting. My last breakup was in 2019, four-year relationship, so I've been through it before, but it doesn't make it any easier. Then there's also the mental side of things, where it now feels like a pattern. Are all my relationships going to stagnate after three or four years? Just another head fuck right now. Finally, Reddit, please tell me that a single 35-year-old guy with a very cute dog is perfectly acceptable. And keeping the dog isn't going to be a bad idea. It's over. The what-ifs are haunting me, but at the same time, she cheated and that's on her, not on me. I've booked my flight home. I missed the cutoff for today, but I fly tomorrow. Not sure what to do about the dog, though. She won't let me have her completely. How do I cut off contact but keep the dog then? I want our dog. Update 3, I'm back home. Home being at my sister's house, actually, not at my parents' as some people thought. I didn't include that detail before. So it turns out that my sister, who was friends with my ex and regularly messaged with her, knew that she was unhappy at times earlier this year. She showed me multiple text messages where my ex complained about me working whilst we were visiting her family in July. It was really such a small amount in reality and we were there for over two weeks and I work for myself. And another occasion where my ex hurt her finger and as work was crazy busy for me, she went to A&E by herself instead of me taking her. Then the next day she was told to go to a specialist clinic in another hospital and went herself. Work was crazy busy for me and public transport Uber made it easy for her to get there and I don't recall her getting upset about me not taking her. But she seemed very upset over text messages with my sister. And my sister never said a word to me. I looked back at our texts and my ex didn't seem annoyed at all but was furiously venting to my sis. Now my sister is saying she knew we had problems before we moved into her house as she saw in these text messages. She only showed me the text when I gave her a push. I'm really upset and angry with both of them now. Is this justified? My ex should have communicated that she was unhappy with some of my actions over the summer when they happened, not just complain to my sister. And if my sister saw real trouble in these texts, she made it sound bad. She should have said something to me, but she stayed silent until now when everything has fallen apart. Is my sister in jerk? Or is it just my ex's fault for lack of communication again? Also feels like my fault as well for not putting in the effort slash seeing she needed me at these times in summer. I could have delayed some work emails on our trip until we were back. I only replied when we were chilling and not doing anything else, I thought. I could have taken her to the hospital for her finger, but she told me not to as I was stressed with work and it was easy for her to get there herself. Do these things make me a bad partner at the time? Should I have insisted on taking her as she had hurt herself, even though I was crazy stressed with work and other things going on like the sale of my apartment and it was easier for her to get there herself rather than me take her? She doesn't drive. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you're just extremely shocked and vulnerable and want that feeling to go away. And that's why you want to forgive her. Stop talking to her and get out. Leave. Get angry and go blow off some steam. You're gonna be okay. You probably have just never been hit this hard before and that's okay. It just feels really shitty. Comment two, pack up. Explain to the family why you are leaving. Take the dog and leave. If he had not asked her to break up, she would still be freaking him. She still might anyway. Starting over is better than spending every day 
knowing that the person beside you is more than willing to lie and betray you. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's me again, the guy with the dog and the cheating ex. I've got some updates for you, and let me tell you, it's been a wild few days. After my last post, I was feeling pretty low. I was staying at my sister's place, trying to figure out what to do next. I was still reeling from the breakup and the betrayal, but things took an unexpected turn. First off, the dog situation. I was worried about how I could keep our dog without having to interact with my ex. Well, it turns out that she's been so caught up with her new life that she hasn't even asked about the dog since I left. I guess that's one less thing to worry about. The dog is staying with me, and honestly, she's been a great comfort. Now onto the juicy stuff. Remember how I mentioned my sister knew about my ex's unhappiness and didn't tell me? Well, we had a huge confrontation about it. I was angry, feeling betrayed by my own family. But after a long, heated discussion, my sister broke down and apologized. She said she didn't want to interfere and thought my ex and I could work it out ourselves. I was still mad, but I could see she was genuinely sorry. We've agreed to be more open with each other from now on. But here's the shocker. My ex reached out to me. She wanted to talk. I was hesitant, but I agreed to meet her in a public place. She looked a mess, like she hadn't slept in days. She broke down, apologizing for everything, saying she made the biggest mistake of her life. She begged for another chance. I listened to her, but inside, I felt nothing. It was like I was hearing the words, but they didn't touch me anymore. I told her it was over for good, that I couldn't trust her again. She cried, but I walked away feeling free. It was over, and I was ready to move on. Now I'm focusing on myself. I've been working on my health, and I'm feeling better. I've started looking for a new place to live, somewhere I can start fresh. And work has been picking up too. I've landed a couple of new clients, and it's keeping me busy. As for dating, I'm not rushing into anything. I'm taking it slow, enjoying my own company and the company of my dog. But I've had a few friends set me up on some casual dates. Nothing serious, just coffee or a walk in the park. It's been nice, actually. I'm rediscovering what it's like to connect with someone new. So, Reddit, that's where I'm at. It's been a roller coaster, but I'm coming out the other side stronger. I've got my dog, my work, and a whole future ahead of me. It's not going to be easy, but I'm ready for whatever comes next. And to answer my own question from before, yes, a single 35-year-old guy with a very cute dog is perfectly acceptable. In fact, it seems to be a hit with the ladies. Who knew? GF was raped by co-worker and she's ashamed, but I won't leave her. We take steps to get revenge. I posted here earlier with a post discussing that my girlfriend, female, 22, had been acting very depressed and seemingly hiding what had happened to make her so upset. Here is the link. A lot of people in the comments suggested that she had been sexually attacked, and this is why she told her sister and not me. I didn't want to believe that, for obvious reasons. But about an hour or so ago, I texted her sister, her twin sister, whom I am also close with, and asked her to give me a call when she could. She called me less than a minute later. I explained how my girlfriend, her sister, had been acting, not eating, crying, not taking care of herself, not talking, and that I was getting really concerned. I told her she didn't have to tell me what was going on, but she needed to talk to her sister because she wasn't listening to me. Her sister tells me, I had no idea she wasn't talking to you about what happened, and I didn't know she was treating herself so terribly. We agreed that at the very least, she needed to get up and eat something, and see about getting counseling, if that's what it took. Well, about half an hour later, my girl comes up and starts to explain everything to me. I'll spare the messed up details, but she was sexually attacked by someone in a higher position at work. She said she hadn't told me because she was ashamed and didn't want me to be mad at her and didn't want me getting involved by confronting anyone. I assured her I would never be mad at her for something like this, that it's not her fault, that I'm not going anywhere, and that I won't get personally involved unless she wants me to. And it's hard not to want to genuinely freaking unalive this guy. But still, I plan to marry this girl, and this didn't change that. And I won't do something that will cause her more distress. After that, and after a lot of assurance that I wasn't leaving and I didn't think it was her fault, 
She sat down and ate, talked a bit more, and then asked if she could please have the bed to herself tonight. I said, of course, so here I am Googling deep diving on the couch. Although I believe that talking helped a little, but obviously she's still suffering. I just don't know what to do. I want her to go to the police, but she doesn't seem to want to. I think this guy at work really scares her, and I don't want to be the one that scares her too, but I told her I don't want her going back to work while this creepy guy is still her boss. She was reluctant, but with her sister's encouragement, she let me call her work and explain that she would be taking a leave of absence, at least for now. Her sister didn't know that it was her boss. My girl omitted the information for fear of having to leave her work. We both told her that her safety was more important than a job at this point. I've been looking at some different literature about intimacy attack and its implications and long-term effects. I don't know how to support her right now, other than just reminding her I'm here when she needs me, that I love her and care for her, and that I want her to be healthy even if she is going through a lot. I also told her that we can ask her sister to come and stay with us if she wants her to be closer. Her sister lives about two hours away, and she really liked that idea. The two of them are close, and I think her sister can help her in ways I definitely can't fulfill. But still, if anyone has any good links that help them, I'd really appreciate if you left them here so I could take a read, or any links that might help her, I can have her sister give them to her. I tried to gently suggest seeing a therapist, but she flipped at the idea. I have no idea why. Also, I don't think she's gone to the hospital after this happened, and though she assured me she wasn't hurt, I still think that's important. How do I gently suggest going there? She hated the idea, but I can understand why. Thanks for any info. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I can understand her reaction to a therapist. It was hard telling you. Imagine telling a total stranger. It's an unfortunate truth that women are taught to think it's their fault. Often these predators use that to scare women into believing that they will not be believed, that they dress a certain way or act a certain way. That's total nonsense, of course. A person who sexually assaults another person is always at fault. Those are also the reasons why most women don't go to the police, along with the shame. Thinking of how it's hard telling someone they love, now imagine having to tell 12 strangers and have to listen to a defense lawyer blame them. Saying all that is to say, all you can do is support her, be there for her, and maybe have her sister be the one to gently encourage therapy. Your girl will never be the same. I know you understand that, but I'm confident that she'll come to understand that you still love her regardless and will hopefully start to heal. Comment 2. Hi, I was sexually attacked at work by a higher up about two years ago. Obviously, everyone is different, but therapy helped a lot. And leaving that workplace for another job environment helped too. Even if the guy gets fired, the space might still be triggering for her. I would keep an eye out for PTSD symptoms in your girlfriend and signs of suicidal thoughts. Again, every attack survivor is different and has different reactions. She may not want to be intimate for a while, etc. While she should definitely go to a therapist, I would also recommend you go to one as well. This can be traumatic for you too, and it would help to have someone who can guide you through your girlfriend's recovery. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the support on my last post. It's been a week since I shared what was going on with my girlfriend, and a lot has happened. I wanted to give you all an update. After my girlfriend's sister came to stay with us, things started to change. Her sister has been a rock, helping her with the smallest tasks which she had been neglecting. They've been spending a lot of time together, talking, and sometimes just sitting in silence, which seems to be helping. A few days ago, my girlfriend decided to report the attack. It was a tough decision and she was terrified, but her sister and I were there with her every step of the way. The guy who did this to her has been suspended from work pending an investigation. It's a relief to know he's not there anymore. But it's also brought up a lot of emotions for my girlfriend. We've had some intense conversations this week. She told me about her fears of not being believed and how she worried that I would see her differently. I reassured her that I love her just as much, if not more, 
for her bravery and strength. It's been hard for her to open up, but I think it's been healing too. Her sister shared with me that they had a cousin who went through something similar years ago, and it was a situation that left a deep impact on their family. Knowing this, I understand now why my girlfriend was so hesitant to talk about it and why her sister immediately jumped on a train to be with us. We also had a bit of a scare when my girlfriend started feeling really sick. I was worried it was from stress or worse that she might have been hurt more than she let on. I convinced her to go to the hospital and thankfully, it was just a bad case of the flu. It was a huge relief, but it also made her realize how important it is to take care of herself. Her sister has been amazing, not just for my girlfriend, but for me too. She's been helping me understand how to be there for her sister in the best way possible. We've been tag teaming on making sure my girlfriend eats, rests, and feels supported. Yesterday, we had a bit of a breakthrough. My girlfriend laughed for the first time in weeks. We were all watching a movie and something silly happened on screen and she just started laughing. It was like music to my ears. Her sister and I joined in and for a few minutes, it felt like things were normal again. Her sister is going to stay with us for a while longer, which I'm grateful for. My girlfriend has started to talk about looking for a new job, something she's passionate about. She's always loved animals and her sister suggested she look into working at an animal shelter or a vet clinic. It's the first time I've seen her excited about something in a long time. We've also been talking about the future more. We're taking things one day at a time, but we've started to make plans again. We're thinking about a small trip somewhere quiet and peaceful once she's feeling up to it. Just a weekend away from everything. I've been doing a lot of reading on how to support someone after an attack. It's been eye-opening, and I've been sharing what I learned with her sister so we can both be better supports. My girlfriend still isn't ready to see a therapist, but she's been writing a lot, which her sister says is a good way for her to process her feelings. It's been a tough week, but it feels like we're moving in the right direction. My girlfriend is slowly getting back to her old self, and I'm just happy to see her smile again. Her sister has been an incredible help, and I can't thank her enough for dropping everything to be here with us. I didn't ask my brother's wife to be a bridesmaid in my wedding, and now he won't talk to me, but I have a plan to get revenge on him. Long time lurker and hoping this community can help. Names and locations changed for privacy. Apologies for the length, y'all, but I feel the context is important. My fiance, Chris, and I have been together for five years and are getting married next summer. He has one brother, Matt, and they have been extremely close their entire lives. Matt is a couple of years younger and is married to his wife of several years, Beth. When Chris finished high school, he left his hometown to join the Navy, and despite the fact that he spent the next eight plus years living far from his family, he and Matt remained close. Long before he and I met, Chris fell in love with a woman named Caitlin. After a couple of years of being together, Kate became pregnant and they were married before the arrival of their son. The marriage fell apart a couple of years and due to infidelity on her side, but it was quite tumultuous throughout. I bring it up to mention that when Matt and Beth married, Chris was asked to be the best man and he was absolutely thrilled to be there to support his younger brother. Kate hated Chris's family, had a newborn, and not only refused to go, but told Chris that he would not be allowed to go either. Kate gave him an ultimatum, go to the wedding, best man or not, and she will consider that abandonment neglect of her and their child and file for divorce. Chris felt he had no option but to prioritize keeping his family together for his son's sake. He has regretted it every day since, and Matt fully knows that Chris feels it was the biggest mistake he has ever made. Fast forward to now, Chris and I moved across the country in 2020 to be closer to our families again. Close enough that we can drive down on the odd weekend and spend all holidays with them. I love his family and am so grateful to be marrying into it. They are awesome people, and Chris is over the moon about being closer to his brother again. All has been what we hoped for. Beth, on the other hand, still seems to hold a grudge that Chris didn't show for his brother's wedding even though Matt has said while it hurt, 
He understands what Chris was dealing with, and it simply is what it is. Beth has always been cordial to us and gracious in opening their home to us and our children when we visit them, and she dotes on the children, but it's clear she does not care for us. Matt allows her to virtually have the final say on anything and everything, and she also has a tendency to become argumentative when a topic arises that others share different opinions on than her and we've overheard her complain to Matt on multiple occasions. You turn into such a jerk when your brother is around, etc. Despite this, I respect their family and their marriage and have strived to love and accept her as she is. She and I seem to get along well all the same, but we never interact with each other outside of family stuff. When it came time for Chris and me to select our wedding party, Matt was the obvious pick for his best man. Despite the fact that Chris wasn't there for his brother's wedding, they both had a mutual understanding of why that happened and the choice Chris was faced with, let alone the impact it had on their family until Chris and Beth ultimately split. Matt seemed really excited and readily accepted the role of best man for our wedding. We have very few extremely close friends, so we have four on each side of the wedding party. I chose my sister as maid of honor and three of my ride or die friends who I had been close with since long before Chris and I met. These three are the three I talk to every single day, are the first I go to when I want to celebrate, vent, laugh, etc. I can't possibly imagine having anyone but them to be there for me. Beth learned a few weeks ago during one of our visits that we've already selected our wedding party and realized she isn't going to be asked to be a bridesmaid. I quickly explained who I picked and the reason why and though she fell completely silent then changed the subject, I knew she would be upset. Matt later pulled Chris aside and said that Beth was extremely hurt that I didn't ask her to be a bridesmaid. Chris explained my choices, and Matt told him he understands both sides, that he feels neither I nor his wife are in the wrong, and it's just unfortunate. That was the end of that conversation, and the rest of our visit seemed to go okay. Ever since that visit, Matt has stopped responding to Chris entirely. They used to text each other daily and play video games together on the weekends, and it has been radio silence. We are certain it's because I didn't ask Matt's wife to be in the wedding party, but he won't respond to confirm it. We don't even know at this point whether to expect him to be Chris's best man. We received a Christmas gift in the mail from them for my daughter, and we sent gifts for both of them with no acknowledgement. Chris is absolutely devastated. At this point, it's not even about the wedding. He is grieving the loss of his brother and closest friend. He's depressed and anxious, has burst into tears at random points almost daily now, and sobbed in my arms last night because he is so stressed and distressed by all of it. He and I have had talks, and he stands behind my decision entirely, and we don't want to add a token groomsman to the wedding party just to open a space on my side. Even if that were to happen, I have two others who I have been close with for years that I had to pass up. It was a tough decision for me as it was. I want to reach out to Matt myself to try to reason with him and hope that he will at least start talking to his brother again. There are a million things I can say, but I am at a loss. One thing taken the wrong way could make it worse, and I'm worried I'll screw it up. What should I do? Reddit? Edit. Couple of typos. Edit number two, realized I calculated the timing wrong. Chris's son was not a newborn at the time of Matt and Beth's wedding. He was almost two. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I really hate to say this, but as sorry as Chris is, he started the ball rolling on this. Just as much as family seems important to you, it may be to her as well. And based on this post Chris has, not shown up to a day important to her partner, but also her, caused tension in the family she's newly a part of, then on the next round excludes again. I'm not saying she's right, because her lack of communication is immature. However, her beef with feelings on your fiancé seemed to be valid. Seems like reconciliation efforts were made toward brother. But who do you think was there to support him through that emotional time, just as you're supporting your fiancé? Shitty ex aside, your fiancé made a choice and the effects and implications are apparently more far-reaching than he thought. If he wants to actually right the past, 
then he needs to open the floor for larger conversations and consider more than just the main players as affected. Comment 2. I love how the narrative of this story is two innocent men are being controlled by evil, manipulative women. Very convenient. I would love to hear Beth's side of the story, as I believe it would be very illuminating to what the actual truth of this whole debacle is. You have no requirement to make Beth a bridesmaid, but just as Chris chose to be a united front with his wife when it came to Matt's wedding, it seems Matt is choosing to be a united front with his wife when it comes to yours. Chris long ago made the bed you're both lying in. And I also suspect the issue is bigger than just Beth doesn't get to be a bridesmaid. She saw your husband Shti on his brother all those years ago. And needless to say, I'm sure she still harbors resentment over that. I think you should stay the heck out of it and let Chris and Matt deal with the issues between them that were clearly never actually resolved. Now for the update. Hey Reddit. Back with an update on the situation with my fiancé Chris, his brother Matt, and the wedding drama. It's been a week since I last posted, and boy do I have some news. After my last post, I decided to take the plunge and reach out to Matt myself. I was nervous, but I felt like we couldn't just let things fall apart. I sent him a text explaining how much Chris missed him, and how important it was for us to have him in our lives, especially with the wedding coming up. I waited, heart pounding, for what felt like hours. Finally, he replied. Matt agreed to meet me for coffee, just the two of us. I was anxious, but hopeful. When we sat down, the air was tense. Matt confessed that Beth had been feeling left out and that it had put a strain on their relationship. He admitted that he had been avoiding Chris because he didn't know how to handle the situation without upsetting either his wife or his brother. I listened, trying to understand where he was coming from. I shared stories about how Chris had always looked up to Matt, even when they were kids. How he'd been there for Chris after the messy divorce with Caitlin, and how much it meant to Chris to have him as his best man. Matt's eyes softened as he remembered the bond they shared. The conversation turned to the wedding, and I explained again why I chose my bridesmaids. I told Matt about the time one of my friends had helped me through a rough patch in college and how another had been like a sister to me since we were in middle school. Matt nodded, understanding that these bonds were important too. Then, out of nowhere, Matt dropped a bombshell. He told me that Beth was pregnant. They hadn't announced it yet because of all the tension, but he wanted me to know. I was stunned but overjoyed for them. This was the kind of news that could change everything. I suggested that maybe we could find a special role for Beth in the wedding, something that would make her feel included without being a bridesmaid. Matt's face lit up at the idea. We brainstormed and decided that Beth could do a reading during the ceremony. It was perfect. She loved poetry and had a way with words. Feeling hopeful, I went home to Chris and told him everything. He was shocked but thrilled about the baby news. He immediately called Matt and I could hear the relief in their voices as they talked. They made plans to meet up and game like old times. The next day, Matt and Beth came over for dinner. It was awkward at first, but as the evening went on, the tension melted away. Beth even pulled me aside to apologize for her behavior. She explained how she had felt insecure about her place in the family and that the pregnancy hormones were making her extra emotional. I hugged her, and we both got teary-eyed. Chris and Matt spent the night catching up, laughing, and sharing stories. It was like the old days, and I could see the weight lifting off Chris's shoulders. Beth and I started planning her reading for the wedding, and she was genuinely excited about it. The rest of the week was a blur of positive energy. Chris and Matt were back to texting and gaming, and Beth even joined a group chat with my bridesmaids to help with wedding planning. It felt like we were all coming together as a family. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any better, Chris came home with a surprise. He had found an old photo album at his parents' ceiling house filled with pictures of him and Matt as kids. We spent the night going through it, laughing at their bowl cuts and goofy grins. As the week came to a close, I felt a sense of peace. Our wedding was back on track, the family was healing, and there was a new little life on the way. It was a reminder that even when things get tough, Love and understanding can pull us through. 
If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.